uh, can I have a show of hand? How many programmers here? Um, anyone expecting intelligent semantics algorithm? Sorry, you got to, you will be disappointed. It's basic web crawling, guys. So if you want to leave, you can leave first. Okay, so um, so to the, so this talk is about uh, me trying to crawl the web. Uh, basically, I been trying to grab data from from online for the last uh, one or two years, uh, mainly for a few projects, uh, legally. Uh, um, and one of the project is for fun, which is during the haze period. Uh, if you remember, if you are in Singapore, you remember that uh, we hit 400 PSI, right? Uh, and I was like looking at the NEA website and like looking at the data, can I just, it looks simple. I thought it, it would take me five minutes, but it didn't take my five, uh, five minutes. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to show you uh, with demo, uh, and hopefully you learn something from, from uh, this talk. So let me repeat again, that's, that's not con going to be a complex solution, uh, intelligent semantics algorithm. Sorry about it, it's going to be simple calling. So uh, it's not going to be how you should be crawling the web. Uh, I'll be happy to hear if you have another solution. I'll be happy to hear what's your solution like. And of course, please. So uh, yes. So the left, the, the picture on the left is the NEA website. Uh, data is filled in table tables. Uh, the one on the right is the app that I created. Um, um, basically, it, it display um, the PSI value, uh, mobile optimized, uh, just for fun. I, I did it just for fun. So um, I'm going to show you. So uh, I'm going to use Ruby to for this demo, and um, so on that day it was Thursday. It's like it was boring, so I was drinking my coffee and checking the PSI value. Um, this is a website, right? And it's like clicking in and then I realized when I click onto the uh, second link the URL is not changing it's funny it should change but it's not changing but anyway I just ignore it and carry on because um, I just inspect right and see and look at the data yeah it's there five minutes work right should be simple but in the end I took 30 minutes uh, uh, why let me show you so um, So basically, I'm using Nokogiri. Nokogiri is a HTML parser. If you are crawling the web, you have to use a parser and something that grabs data online, right? So um, to grab data online, I'm using open URL. Can you, can you see it? Can you guys see it? Um, and so it should be simple, right? The URL is here. Take it, um, which is here. And call it, so I call it again. And when I see this, right, I was like, how come the data is so small, smaller than, smaller than whatever I, I'm looking at here. Over here is, is a lot of data, right? So, so um, it's fun, things is funny. So proceed uh, looking at the data and, and see uh, what I can gather. So I look at the children, right? Uh, look at how children count. Only two children. Look at children, children count, um, and things like this. So um, in the end, I didn't find what I want. 
And then I realized that uh, how come when I see the data with my naked eyes, but I cannot, uh, I cannot get the data, right? What technology is this? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, any any idea? Actually, it's quite simple. Yeah, so it should be iframe, right? So I need to find an iframe. So iframe is uh, basically it allows you to have a app, have a website, but uh, residing in somewhere else. So I just need to find the iframe manually, and uh, and should is is here. It's uh, if I look at the inspector, right? I just need to find the. Source the URL that that I'm supposed to crawl. Again, five minutes work. Um, um, if you look here, close enough. This looks like this one looks like the one. Tap in it. It's the same. It's the same website. It looks the same, but different URL. Uh, click in. Now, the URL changed as well. So it it makes sense. It. Now it makes more sense. Previously it didn't change. Previously it's like something is wrong. So this should be the URL that I, I wanted. I take it, right? Execute the same command. Um, um, and then now it returns me data with a lot more. A, a lot more data that I know that I'm hitting something, I know that I'm closer. So the re Whenever I cross something, I usually just open my terminal and do this first because if I want to automate things, right, I want to be scripting things, I need to find uh, my code right first and then later I'll just uh, put it somewhere, schedule it or, you know, um, to make it automated. So, so these are the data, but if you look at it, it's like, what is this? What is this mess, man? But uh, if you look closer, right, there are values that I wanted. I'm not sure if you can see it, but uh, I can see it. There are values that I wanted. So I just need to, I just need to clear the mess. I just need to clear this so that I, I see what I want, right? So um, uh, let me execute the next command. Um, what I just did was basically converts whatever I, I got into an array. So now you see numbers, right? That is up to 423 uh, um, elements. They are, put, they are put in the box. So right now, I can, I can basically um, go to each box, right? Type in a value in, and I'm able to get individual data, right? So I'm one more step closer. And, uh, but it's, it's still not what I want. I, I just want a value, I don't want other rubbish, right? So, so um, let me run more, one more command. Um, this function basically return me the value. Um, so I'm just gonna call, give me tokens array. Um, here, right? So this is the same, uh, I don't know if you see it, but this is actually the same data as that mess just now. And as you see right over here, these are the values that I want, right? Um, and, and that's it. Any question so far? Am I going too fast? This, this is the first example. So, um, Anything that is on the on on the web, I'm able to basically borrow it and and use it somewhere else. And so I take all this value. As you can see, right, uh, I started with unstructured data, data that they are messy, uh, not visible with with your eye, but slowly process it until this format. And I don't know if you know this, but there is an order within all this mess, which is each data that I wanted, right, is followed by the next next data. Uh, is the next data is followed accordingly. So if I'm able to reach the first data, right, the second data will will mean 
the, the one that is the PSI value of the next hour. So therefore, right, um, as long as I'm able to find this value, uh, the next 12 hours will be the next, will be the, in the next 12, uh, 11 containers, right? Um, so, so this is the core, the, the core of the craw crawling code. I use this to get the data and um, I put it in a Rails app and basically run it. So now, if you visit this website, you will be able to see it. Um, um, it's loading. Uh, one time, each time you call, so it's uh, it's called on runtime right now, because it's just a thirty minutes work. So I'm going to talk about uh, what I could, be, what I should be doing. So every time somebody crawl, right, um, somebody hit the website, the data will be connected, will be displayed this way. Um, I was talking to my friend yesterday uh, about this, and they were commenting like. What if I write a script and hit this this uh, this URL? Will it cause any website to go down? See, the thing is, uh, I spent 30 minutes. I'm only one developer, and there's only a, this Heroku is a free app. So I think that Heroku will go down before any go down. <laughs> so there's no, there's totally no. I don't think there's a risk at all. So. Um, Anyway, the demand for this uh, data right uh, drops after the sky clear, so it was really it was really for fun. So this is my first. Uh, okay, this is actually not my first project, but uh, this is the latest one that I, I was like playing around with. Um, okay. So let me go back to my slides. Um, so for web crawler, right? I was saying you you basically need a parser, HTML parser, and you need a HTTP client to grab the data from from the internet. And that was the basic crawler that I show you. Um, at my work, right? I'm actually doing something. I'm actually placing it on server instead of running on runtime. Uh, so the difference is that. I'm scheduling it. I'm doing. I'm crawling at, at background. So I have a database where all this data is kept somewhere else. Um, why am I doing this? Is because when I started my projects, uh, uh, I needed data, and I didn't want those fake data of small quantity. I want. I wanted larger quantity. So uh, I thought, you know, internet has a lot of data. Why not just borrow some and, and use it? Um, so I'm at level two, but level three distributed crawling, right, re which is really advanced. Um, you can basically deploy multiple computers, multiple server, to keep your data, um, you know, really up to date. Um, and you could po probably crawl from multiple sources as well. So right now I'm just crawling uh, the demo that I just show NEA website. I'm just I'm just taking I'm just looking at NEA website and and um, borrowing the data, the PSI value. So that's one website. Um, I think that your need for structured data will increase. So obviously Google uh, or any search engine is, is doing distributed crawling. Uh, they, they require your data to be structured instead of unstructured. For basic crawler like mine, I can customize it for my one particular website, and and it works. Uh, um, I can probably crawl it on another website with table format. It will probably work as well. Uh, but for for search engine like Google, right, they will require specific uh, speci specific structure. But let's say uh, when you go to um, Google, right, and you search. Uh, maybe uh, it can. What returns back uh, is actually just the title of the web page. 
the URL of the web of the web page. Every web page will have a title. Every web page will have a URL. If if it's not uh if it's empty right, it's untitled. Uh, description over here. And this is optional, right? Because it depends on how you opti your your search engine optimization is done, right? Um, so going back to my slides, <coughs> the need for structured data increase as you as you crawl more data. Uh, so going back to the previous question on how to improve on. Uh, that first example, right? I could save the data in the database. Uh, when I do that, right, there's no need to hit the whole server all the time. Uh, that's also cheaper to, to do that, to fetch from my database. Instead of crawling, crawling it, uh, it requires me to reach out to the whole server. Um, the third point, crawling in background. Um, so I could, I could probably do this, but it was a 30 minutes work, so I didn't spend time on that. So basically I'm going for the solution that works. So the second demo, right, which is uh, um, another project that I'm working on, uh, is a mobile app where I have a crawling code at the back end where I, I search the web for, for online shops and basically bring them together in one place. So um, there won't be code for this one. I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to show you uh, uh, what I have here. So um, this is the the iPhone app. So the difference between this right and what I showed you just now is that uh, when a user hit one of the shops, right, the crawler is not activated because the crawler is separated from the server code. The crawler is always crawling every one minute. Uh, if you think about it, it's just one HTTP request per minute. So uh, when, right, okay. let me run it again. So when you when you press one of the shops here, uh, you're actually drawing from my database instead of hitting the the host. Uh, the whole server, which is the shop server. Um, what we are trying to do is to basically put everything in one place on mobile app so that uh, people can browse through them easily. Um, any questions so far? So, Okay, let me move on, right? Uh, the, th the third demo will be JavaScript. So just now, right, I was using Ruby to, to basically be grabbing data, but you can actually do it in JavaScript as well. And in fact, uh, JavaScript, because it's of its nature is a web language, right? Uh, web programming language. It's even easier to do that. Uh, simple things like, so if you, Maybe go to Carousel. Carousel is a local startup. Uh, if let's say I would like to take the the, uh, the picture to reuse the image, um, I'm able to do it pretty easily. So, so um, So the command is just document dot images, right? Uh, nothing much. But what if I can put JavaScript on iPhone? So, which I actually I did it. Uh, so for the same app, right over here. Uh, if I click here, browser. Basically, what I did was uh, I put JavaScript into Web View, and of course, this is not Carousel, but it's another shop. There's image as well. I'm able to uh, basically convert it into a more usable form uh, that user is capable of browsing through. So now it's converted just by one click. Basically, uh, it's JavaScript. 
we took out the images, we remove ima images that we don't want, too small resolution, too, too bad. Uh, and basically, um, display the image in, in, in a more useful format. Uh, why is this important to the merchant is because they do, uh, they do not want to, in this particular case, right, they do not want to reuse the image. If they upload somewhere else, they want to reuse that image and um, uh, without re-uploading. So a lot of work is done, is saved here. Any question? So what I did was uh, basically execute document document dot images um, by grabbing the images right I can reuse them uh, and possibly put them together so that consumer can benefit from it consumer don't need to visit each shop specifically uh, time is safe if you want to do it uh, using Ruby or in fact using any language uh, if you are using Python you can use uh, Scrappy uh, or Beautiful Soap uh, these tools are HTML, HTML parser, so um, the syntax is different, but basically it's the same thing. Find the images and reuse the images. So just now I was showing you JavaScript on iPhone. Um, how I did it was basically uh, there is this command called string by evaluating JavaScript from string uh, over over here. So it's just one neat command. If you are using Android, uh, they have something like this as well, but but it's not called the same name. So you can execute uh, JavaScript and basically get back the result as string. So um, all these things that I have demo, right? It's not uh, new. Facebook has used it. Reddit has used it. When you paste in a link, uh, you see your images automatically appear. It's actually you know grabbing from from the website, right? So if you paste say gitcam dot uh, sg to Facebook, right, you will see this image. Um, of course, as I show you just now, right, Google search results. Uh, simple crawler by distributed uh, display to you uh, simple data like the URL, uh, the web page title, etc. So, uh, I am actually working on another hobby, uh, which is there's a pain. I have a pain point, which is I always get back home late, and I miss my last train. Uh, and checking, if you check on mobile, right, uh, SMRT website, right, you wish that it's easier to find the last bus, last train timing. So, uh, but it, that project wasn't a 30 minutes project, so uh, um, I gave up in, in the end, as in I paused, I paused the project, because there's too many stations and uh, but of course, I do have something myself. I live in Yishun, so basically I can see the data pretty easily without visiting SMRT. Um, but in this page, right, for example, uh, there is capture, which, which prevents you from uh, basically grabbing data from, from website. Um, and usually people will ask me like how to overcome this. Um, any idea, guys? How can we overcome this without using computer vision or? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> death by death by what? Uh, to bypass this.
Right, so this guy was saying uh, use a web service called Dev by Captcha, right? To right, is there any solution where I there's no need to use that? Right, right. So how I'll do this is I just present it to the user and ask them to type it for me. <laughs> and uh, if it if it uh, if it's correct, the next page will be the correct data, right? Then the the crawling will work. Um, and how I do it, so, but there's a concern, if I do this, right, if there's one million user, uh, it will hit the whole server as well, right? So what you can, you can do is you save it in database, and then uh, the second user who, the first user will fetch it for you. It will fetch for a subsequent user. So subsequent user will just grab from your database. So uh, that way will not be, you will not cause the whole server to go down. So it's still possible you let the user just overcome the capture for you. Right. So any questions so far? And or any critiques which I get? Yeah, sure please. Have you tried contacting any of these companies to get them Have I tried to contact this company yeah, to get API? Right. Uh, I have not. I don't think they have an API. Um, there is services where government is opening up, right? And they put data into into uh, I think data dot gov dot sg, uh, where you can fetch. But you can't find data like last train timing, which is really important. You know, it can benefit a lot of people. Uh, but you cannot find those data. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Sorry, I can't, I can't hear you. Is there a standard format for us? Um, so your question is, sorry? <laughs> a public feed? But the last time I checked, I did not get this. Maybe, maybe that is. Maybe you can give me the link or something. But um, uh, so that will actually save a lot of time, right? And and format. But what I'm trying to show here is that uh, it's not just for last last train timing. It's actually anything that is online, that is available for the public use. Uh, you should be able to get it even if there's no API. Um, so that's the, that's the, uh, the whole point of, the, of all this. Without, without uh, asking the company to set up an API for you or things like that. Um, so one of the criticism is it's not worth doing it. But for me, I just do it for fun. Uh, I just want to explore. Um, and the team for today's Git Camp is because we can do it, right? But as long as you, there's no, you don't cause any damages, uh, you do not cause the whole server to go down because that will affect other other passenger, right? Um, so, yeah. So, is it worth doing it? The the PSI website, right? That I did, right? I took thirty minutes to crawl. And then the web page, uh, the Rails app, I took another um, one or two hours to do it. Basically, it's grabbing from another project. And the survey is still running now. So to me, uh, the time the time return is, is good. The, 
the time for the time invested is okay for me. Um, the second criticism is it doesn't always work, right? But I don't quite agree with this because, you know, API like Twitter or or even GitHub, they go down as well for for other reasons for various reasons. So, uh, yes, it doesn't. It's not hundred percent, but. Again, right? Uh, exploring data, you should have the freedom to to explore data any way you can see it with your naked eye. Why can't I um, browse through it um, with code, right? But then again, I have to repeat: uh, you shouldn't be causing any damages. So, lastly, um, I'm just going to leave this last point for you guys. Uh, even for unstructured data, that there are structure, but you just got to find it. Um, yeah, that's it. Question? Yeah, sure, please. No, it's not a criticism, but uh, I think the old, I, I'm doing something similar to this, and my fear always is that if the structure of the website changes, it's going to ruin the whole code. For example, if they change the tables into some other form, or they cut out one column or whatever. Have you thought of ways of extracting your code that passes the information that will take into account these future changes? Have I thought of any ways to uh, automatically um, basically pack crawl again no. if the... Yeah, no, I think just structuring the code a bit to take into account possible future changes to the structure of the website. Right, basically some semantic uh, yeah. understanding. So. Um, I don't think that will work. I don't think that is a 100% algorithm. So to me, I didn't want to spend more time on that. That's why I didn't explore that. But uh, actually, I have an opinion. I don't think that there will ever be. I think that it will take a very long time until we have that kind of al algorithm. Sure, sure. And uh, I think the only thing is that during the haze crisis, I noticed that the NA website itself completely changed. Right. So, so for in the course of a few days, you know, if you had written something before that, you might Right, so he was, this gentleman was saying that the website was down because there's some structure change, right? In fact, the website was down three times. Uh, it just took me um, not more than 30 minutes each time because, right, the crawler did not break at all. Uh, the crawler still works. It's just that the data has shift. So uh, I just need to go in and insert the first data because since I told you, right, the subsequent hour's data, right, it's, uh, it's within the... Is if you order, if you see that, um, if you look at my terminal here, right, the next data is actually the next. This data here, right, is actually the data for the uh, for the next hour. So I just need to find the first one, and then you just loop it. So I just need to find it, find that one data. The subsequent data will just fall in, go into place. So. Yeah.